Welcome to this video series on clinical examination brought to you by the Department of Clinical Medicine at the Faculty of Medicine, Colombo. Now, our objective in producing this series is to give you an overview of the correct technique of the clinical examination, at the same time pointing out some of the common mistakes made by the students. In this tape, we deal with the respiratory system. I thank Ajit, who is here today, for volunteering for this program. Traditionally, we perform the clinical examination first by doing a relevant clinical examination of the general body, then proceeding to examine the neck and the thorax. You should examine, you should begin the examination as you approach the patient. Stand back and use your wide angle lens. You might observe whether the patient is comfortable, whether he can lie comfortably on bed without becoming dyspneic. Has he lost weight recently? Any sign of any signs of cachexia might indicate possible tuberculosis or carcinoma. As you approach this patient, look at his face. Look at the conjunctive. Is there any evidence of polycythemia or anemia? Look at the lips and the tongue. Do you put that is there any evidence of cyanosis? The beefy red tongue of uh, polycythemia with central cyanosis is characteristic. Look for any evidence of facial edema, any swelling in the face and the neck that might indicate presence of either copulmonary or SVC obstruction. Patient's hands give us very valuable information. Look at the nails. Now, are there any nicotine stains? That might indicate that patient is a smoker. Look for clubbing. Clubbing is one of the very important physical signs in the respiratory system. So pick your uh, patient's hands to eye level and look at the angle between the nail bed and the nail. One of the earliest manifestations of a clubbing is the obliteration of this angle. Later on, this can progress into increased curvature of the nail. Later on, going into gross clubbing, which involves the whole pulp. Sometimes it's associated with changes in the wrist joint, hypertrophic pulmonary osteoarthropathy. If the patient is hypoxic and cyanosed, you might look for any evidence of carbon dioxide retention. He will have a bounding pulse, warm hands, and a flapping tremors. Then proceed to look at patient's feet. Of course, you might notice clubbing in the toes, but the important thing is to look for any evidence of fluid retention, pitting edema in the patient's feet. Presence of pitting edema, fluid retention, in a patient with a respiratory problem might indicate either core pulmonary. Once you finish the general examination, you proceed to the examination of the neck and the chest. This we do in four steps. Inspection, palpation, percussion, and auscultation. Let's start the inspection by first looking at the patient's neck. There are many things again you might observe with the neck. You look for any scars, barbs, scars, any lumps, perhaps lymph node masses. Look for the use of the accessory muscles which might indicate that there is the patient is in some respiratory embarrassment. Usually, between the suprasternal notch and the cricoid, you can insert about three fingers. But 
when there is hyperinflation of the chest like in a chronic asthmatic or chronic obstructive airway disease, this distance is greatly reduced. Look at the chest, look at the skin, are there any distended veins? Distended veins in the neck, in the chest, coupled with engorged veins in the neck, particularly if they are non-pulsating, might indicate the presence of SVC obstruction. Distended neck veins with prominent A wave suggest the presence of co-pulmonary. Look for any radiotherapy marks on the chest. Sometimes there may be small telangiac TC as a result of radiotherapy. Look for thoracotomy scars and look for any suprasternal and uh, supraclavicular, intercostal and subcostal recession. This again indicates that the presence of very high pressure waves or pressure gradients inside the pleural cavity, particularly in case of chronic obstructive airway disease. Chest shape is also important. There may be certain skeletal deformities, pectus carinatum, pectus excavatum, and in case of long-standing obstructive airway disease, barrel-shaped chest or increase in the anterior posterior diameter. Sometimes students often forget to examine the back. Put a kit in. Look at the back. Run your finger down the spine and look for a kyphoscoliosis. Take a side view and estimate what the anterior posterior diameter is. To judge whether there is barrel shaped chest, this is the best view. Next we look at the respiration or the breathing movements and for this we use a tape measure. You measure at the level of the nipples and ask the patient to take deep breaths in and out. You also should look at the type of the breathing, whether there is a thoracoabdominal, and also take this opportunity to, to count the respiratory rate. When you count the respiratory rate, make sure that the patient is not aware that you are counting the respiration. Next, you compare the size, the symmetry of the movements, which is a very important step at this point, because if the movements are reduced on one side, then that indicates that there is some problem on that side. For this purpose, you take a step back. Take a tangential view of the chest and ask the patient to take one or two good deep breaths. Next, we proceed to the second step of the examination, namely palpation. We begin by palpating the neck. When you palpate the neck, you should do that from the front as well as from the back. You look for the lymph nodes, you get the patient to relax the neck, put the, uh, flex the neck a little, and then feel all the lymph node areas. submandibular, submental, along the carotid sheet, as well as supraclavicular and the scalene node. The best position to palpate the neck is from behind. Pay particular attention